Flat Earth Falsities, The Oblate Pear Earth. In this continuing series, I'm going to debunk various common flat earth claims. Since I started making videos on this subject, I often get the same nonsensical claims over and over again. These are all based on false information, misunderstandings of science, or errors in reasoning. Today, we are going to get to the bottom of the oblate pear-shaped earth claim. Flat earthers like to point out that Neil deGrasse Tyson said that the earth was oblate and also pear-shaped. Then they point to photos of the earth which appear perfectly spherical and call foul. Either Tyson is lying or the pictures must be fake. Well, it is true that Tyson did say the earth is oblate and pear-shaped. Earth, throughout its life, even when it formed, it was spinning, and it got a little wider at the equator than it does at the poles. So it's not actually a sphere, it's, an, it's oblate, and officially it's an oblate spheroid, that's what we call it. But not only that, it's slightly wider below the equator than above the equator. A little chubbier. A little chubbier. Yeah. Chubby's a good way, it's like pear-shaped. So, which is it? Is Tyson wrong, or are the photos wrong? Well, neither. What are we missing? Well, flat earthers are failing to ask one critical question. By how much is it oblate? Why would you not ask that question? Size matters. The earth is oblate and pear-shaped, but only by a very tiny amount, based on very accurate measurements. The amount is just too small to see in a photo of the earth. Tyson never said it looks oblate or pear-shaped. In fact, he said the word slightly and a little bit multiple times when talking about this, without specifying the actual measurements. Just a tiny bit of research, though, will find you the answer. In this Scientific American article, and several other easy-to-find sources, we see that the Earth is 26 miles wider at the equator than it is from pole to pole. That 26 miles amounts to a difference of only about three-tenths of one percent. It is just way too small a difference to notice in the picture of the Earth. For example, this picture of the Earth from the Discover satellite is 1024 pixels across. This means that each pixel is about 7.7 .7 miles, and the 26 miles of the actual Earth's oblateness will only amount to about three pixels. So let's make this picture more ablate by three pixels to see what that looks like. Did you catch it? It's barely noticeable. You can see if I go back and forth that it does change slightly, but you surely would not notice it on its own. It's way too subtle. If you are watching on a mobile device, I'm not even sure you can see it at all. Neglecting to consider the size of the oblateness is a very common type of error, frequently seen in flat earth claims, as well as in other forms of pseudoscience. It's an error of omission, a type of cherry picking. They are leaving out a critical component of the truth, and then using that omission to make a fallacious argument. And while we are talking about size, another similar flat earth question is, why can't we see all the satellites in these pictures? This one is so silly. Most satellites are about the size of cars or even smaller, and most are in low Earth orbit around 99 to 1200 miles up from the surface. But photos of the whole Earth are taken from hundreds of thousands of miles away. The Discover satellite, for example, located at a point of gravitational equilibrium between the Earth and Sun, called a Lagrangian point, takes photos of the Earth from about 930,000 miles away. Do you expect to be able to see a car at that distance? No, of course not. You can't even see cities. So why would you expect to see satellites? This is particularly absurd, considering that flat earthers want us to believe that the sun sets because it gets too far away to see, when it could only be a few thousand miles away in their model and it's much bigger than a satellite. So why would they expect to see a satellite at hundreds of thousands of miles away? This just makes no sense. 
You can see satellites from the ground, under the right conditions. With the naked eye, they just look like a light gliding across the sky. But with magnification, you can even see some details. And of course, you can see them from orbit. But in either case, you won't see multiple satellites at a time, as some flat earthers suggest. They see illustrations like this and get the false impression that you should be able to see many satellites at a time. No, again, they are way off on the scale of things. Even though there are thousands of satellites, they are still many miles apart from each other. Because they orbit at a wide range of heights, the Earth is really, really big, and the three-dimensional space around the Earth is even bigger. Flat Earthers just don't seem to understand that. Thanks for watching. Be sure to see my other series, Proving the Earth is Not Flat, in which I explain all the evidence you can see for yourself that proves the spherical shape of the Earth. And also, please subscribe, like, and share.